Okay. So we'll now start with our basic bedside cardiology. So you, the other day we discussed on the different symptoms observed in patients with cardiac disease. So this time, how to do the cardiac examination? We'll be discussing the you know the cardiac examination, correct way of doing the cardiac examination. So to start with your cardiac examination, you will need to have your and your materials ready, your equipments like your BP apparatus, your stethoscope. These are the things that you you will need. Or if, for example, you are already um, practicing physician, you might you might probably need a portable ECG. Pedian, so you will know what are the problems of your patient. But in your, I know, for students, you need to have mastito, the BP apparatus and your stethoscope. Okay. So to start with your cardiac examination, you start with your um, vital, vital uh, signs. So you get the blood pressure of the patient. So in the cardiac examination, you follow the five finger approach. So this is actually Dr. Harvey. So he's the one who started the five finger approach. So the first finger represents your history, but you need to get the history first before you perform your physical examination. Then next is you proceed with the physical examination. So we're here now already. We're starting to do the cardiac examination. And the others are your mga tests needed to come up with your diagnosis of the cardiac problem. So the ECG, X-ray, and your laboratory examinations. <clears throat> So how do we get the blood pressure accurately? So since we are now in the digital age, digital BP na yung ginagamit, di ba? So, um, but some of you are mga nurses, med techs, and uh, what's this? Physical therapist. I guess you know how to get the blood pressure accurately. Sige daw. Who are the nurses here? Kalapri, are you a nurse? Uh, no, doc. Uh, what's your ano, pre-med? Uh, BA Psychology po. Ah, di ka muna ko ang BP. Diyari po, doc. Unfortunately. Uh, I guess. Aprilio. Yes, doc. Good morning. So, sige daw. How do you get the blood pressure accurately? If you still remember. I know you're a nurse, no? No, doc. Med tech po. Oh, med tech ka, But you know how to get the BPO. Because med yes, doc. So, taught how to get the blood pressure. Sige, do you still remember the steps? Ikang... Uh, tikang katikangan to, like papaling parang pasyente, pero rest uh, na yung mga 5 minutes before mag-take. Okay, okay, sige, so sige, oo. Kung ano natin na nung duman, what you can um, recall? Assuming, assuming uh, nagbinaktasa ng pasyente para mas accurate ang imo uh, blood pressure, you let the patient rest mga 5 to 15 minutes. And then, uh, palingkuran mo pasyente comfortably. And then, uh, when in preference, right or left uh, brachial on, uh, vein or so good. And then, is there a you, difference? Is there a difference whether you get the BP on the right side or right arm or on the left arm? May dagat difference, doc, pero there is so good ka significant. Oh, so there's actually no significant difference. Yes, doc. Otherwise, if there's a significant difference between the two arm, you have a problem already. Yes, Doc. Okay, sige. And then, uh, kon adult, you use the adult cuff 
or kon bibihiya ah uh, yusan panbata may dito mas gamay and then you play uh, you tight ay ha you tight and then you wrap the cuff uh tightly around the kuan uh, the arm but not too tight because uh, magigin uh, erratic nat imo korotkop sounds yes and then ano uh, after you wrap it uh, you place the bell of the uh, stethoscope on the kuan uh, tao gito uh, median cubital fossa <laughs> And then, koan, um, uh, you will, tau okay, you will actuate the, ano ba tau gito ng apartan koan, and BP up. Basta an koan dok, ang gipa pump. An <laughs> ano? Ang gipa pump, ano tau gito? An ball. Yeah, oh yes, dok, an ball. You will pump the ball up until the koan. Usually, uh, up until the last nga uh, measured nga BP han patient. Okay, if you go too far, uh, magigin koan, tawag ito, too tight lang kaya kador, if too much pressure, and if too little liwat, uh, di rin accurate ito mo koan. So usually, you will pump up to the last known uh, BP pressure of the patient, and then you will, koan na, you will listen for the correct of sounds. Usually, uh, the blood pressure is the first correct cough sound up until the last correct cough sound. So that's your um, BP pressure. So that's how you take your uh, blood pressure of the patient. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aparilio. So more or less, may the idea how to get a blood pressure, but there are some things that you have forgotten already, I think. Sige, we will continue. So. BP measurement is very important. Almost all the time, we measure the blood pressure, but um, physicians have actually forgotten to, to take correctly the blood pressure because of their uh, busy schedule. There are so many patients already waiting in the waiting room. So, Dina na follow the correct way of getting the blood pressure. So it is very important that from the very beginning, the student must learn to record the blood pressure properly. So accurate blood pressure recording will then become a habit and this will remain with the physician for his lifetime if you are doing it correctly. So these are the, the steps in taking your blood pressure. So, Dr. Aperilio has mentioned that um, if the patient, for example, uh, is a new patient, tapos uh, naglinakat ko, no, let, allow the patient to rest at least 15 minutes, at least 15 minute, minutes para you take the correct BP. Because if you will not uh, allow the patient to rest after a physical activity, you will have a koan, a false uh, elevated blood pressure. So allow the patient to rest for a while. So you will get the true blood pressure of the patient. So then you let the patient uh, sit down and then make sure that the arm of the patient is at the level of the heart. So, dapat may, may table. So, ang table or armrest should be at the level and heart of the patient. Pag butang niya iya, ano, iti iya uh, arm. And then you snug the application, uh, snug application of your compression cuff. So, you now apply uh, snug your compression cuff. But it should not be too loose or too tight. So you just you can put your finger, two finger, amutot imo ko an allowance uh, behind han imo BP cuff, so that it should not be too tight or too loose. Next is you palpate the radial artery. So you know where your radial artery is. 
Naram ka mo where your radial artery is. So anyway, sige, may Danian, uh, I will uh, flash to you some ano, pictures. So you compress your radial artery, uh, you, you palpate, I mean the radial artery, while you are compressing the, uh, or inflating the BP cuff. Until you have obliterated the radial pulse. Meaning to say, obliterated the radial pulse na wala ka nang na, na appreciate na pulsation of your radial pulse. Absence uh, of pulsation of your radial pulse. So you already have obliterated radial artery. Then, um, continue your palpation ha, of your radial artery, then you slowly deflate the cuff. So the deflation should be at 2 to 3 millimeters mercury per bit. Diba? You, have, you already have obliterated the radial artery. So now you deflate. So after your deflation, as you slowly deflate the radial artery, take note of the appearance again of the pulsation of your radial pulse. So once the radial pulse or the pulse of your radial artery appear, you're able to appreciate it. That's your systolic blood pressure. So what is the next step? So you completely deflate your BP cuff and then you put the bell of your stethoscope. You will be using the bell of the stethoscope because the bell of the stethoscope is used for low pitch sound while your diaphragm of the stethoscope is used for high pitch sound. We have a discussion for this on the parts of the stethoscope in our next um, uh, lectures. So you now put the or place the bell of the stethoscope in your what artery adukuan? It's not the radial artery but rather your brachial artery. Okay. In your antecubital fossa. And then you again inflate the compression cuff. So the, the inflation of your compression cuff should be at least 30 millimeters mercury above the systolic BP that you were able to appreciate when you were inflating or palpating the radial pulse. Diba? Kanina na una, you palpate the radial pulse until you have, and then inflate the BP cuff until you have obliterated the, the radial pulse. And then, you slowly release or deflate the compression cuff and then once you have appreciated the pulsation of the radial pulse, that's your systolic. If, for example, an immopulsation, the first pulsation of the radial pulse, you're able to appreciate it at 120 millimeters mercury. Now, the inflation of your cuff should be at 150, up to 150 lang. 30 millimeters mercury light imo allowance from that, ha? Huh? Did, did you get me? So that it will not be too too tight. Kasi ma, uh, I observed some of the nurses, for example, in the hospital or even the nursing attendant, they will get the BP, tapos inflate lang ng inflate until uh, the patient would ano, complain na masakit. Because they do not know up to what level to inflate. So this time, you know how that the level should be only at 150. That's the allowance, 30 lang, 30 millimeters mercury. Because when you do your um, 
radial pulsation or radial um, palp the palpitation of palpitation the palpation of your radial artery you were able to appreciate the systolic bp by by uh, radial uh, pulse uh, at 120 millimeters mercury so you add 150 milli 150 30 millimeters mercury to make it 150 millimeters mercury so that is where you will uh, compress the cup up to that level and then again you slowly deflate the cup at a rate of two to three millimeters mercury per bit to determine now the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure so the first crop sound that you hear is your systolic blood pressure and the last sound or disappearance of the sound the Korotkov sound is your diastolic blood pressure. So when um, getting the blood pressure, your BP apparatus also should be compatible with your patient. Um, because there are sizes for the BP cuff. Like for example, if it's children you have this different sizes and width of your bp cuff if the patient is an average adult the the width is at least 12 cm and then the length is 23 centimeters pag ubis naman um, the recommendation is to use 14 cm width of your BP cuff and a length of 35 cm. Kasi di ba pag ubis, sometimes you cannot um, uh, compress the radial break up, uh, the brachial artery completely kasi na ano na na open. So dapat exact ano exact uh, size of your BP cuff. So these are the recommendations for you know, for infants and children of your compression cuff. So before we were using the mercury mercury type of your BP apparatus or swig manometer, and now we are using the digital and the aneroids. So mercury has been banned because the mercury is toxic but uh, your mercury type of your sphygmonometer is more accurate than aneroid so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of the two types of your sphygmonometer so for mercury you have great accuracy and then um, standard for pressure measurement and then the, the parts also are easily replaceable and it will not require calibration. While um, one of the disadvantages is bulky. Siya. It's relatively bulky and then you have breakable parts and usually you have to keep the, the apparatus in a vertical position while you are using the sphygma manometer for androids it's portable so easy to carry lang siya however your androids will require frequent calibration so ito nga mga androids na to na bp up will need uh, calibrations every six months and it must be factory prepared As I've said, digital age na tayo, so we have already the digital uh, BP apparatus. So you do still remember this formula. So this is your, the mean arterial pressure is equivalent to your 
cardiac output times your total peripheral resistance. And this indicates the primary, the primacy of flow and resistance in the control of your arterial pressure. So what are the phases of your Korotkov sounds? I was earlier mentioning of Korotkov sounds. So what Korotkov sounds? So you have phases of your Korotkov sounds. So this is Nikolai Korotkov. He's the one who, I know, who first noted the Korotkov sound. So this is what I was telling you that the table should be on the arm of the patient should be the level of the heart. Huh? So your phase one of your Krotkov sound is described as a low pit sound. And this is um, due to the opening of the artery. Your phase two is a high, higher pitch sound. And this is due to the continuing opening of the artery. Because the bus, I've said, you have to obliterate first the artery. Kaya nawawala yung sound. And then you will slowly, slowly uh, deflate. So na loosen na yung cuff. So you will now start to hear the sound. So the second or phase two of your Krotkov is higher pitch sound due to continuing opening of the artery. For phase three, it's a high pitch sound with a more Moorish quality that will result or that results from greater flow. And your phase four, you will hear more of a more more rather than a sound. And phase five is the silent phase. So, di mo na madidinig ang Korotkov sound. Okay. So, proper technique in taking your BP. So, the first to measure your arterial and venous blood pressure is Stephen Hales. Is the one who first recognized the concept of cardiac output and peripheral resistance. So you position the patient, bedding, lying, then sit, sitting or lying, especially if these are admitted patients. So if the patient is sitting, the arm and the forearm should be supported on a table at heart level. If we come bent, the cuff should be at the cardiac level also. So you need to verify in the contralateral arm also. So the difference in the reading obtained on both uh, positions ordinarily should not be significant. As I have mentioned, walang, there's no significant difference between the two arm. So dapat i-verify mo muna if talagang you have the same ano, or buti ay lang na difference. So the pressure may be much lower when the patient is standing. And whenever this uh, condition is suspected, reading should be taken in lying, sitting, and standing position. And that is uh, done two minutes apart. So you feel the radial pulse. Ito yun. While you are uh, inflating the cuff or raising the mercury column if you are using the mercurial BP apparatus or sphygmomanometer. So, di ba sabi ko kanina, after you have felt for the radial pulse, you put the bell of your stethoscope on the side of your brachial artery and then uh, you slowly or start listening your Korotkov sound while you are deflating your BP apparatus. So, a normal blood pressure, the nature of the top and the murmuris face is illustrated here. So, ito yung first. 
So, pag second phase, parang more moorish na siya. Um, as, as well as the third, louder na. And then the fourth phase, and then the disappearance, which is on the fifth phase. So, on the second phase, <clears throat> the height of the top indicates the intensity as, as the spikes represent the more and more reflecting on its intensity <clears throat> and duration. So if you will look at this diagram, <clears throat> the blood pressure of this patient would be recorded as 110, kasi dito niya na appreciate at 110 level, um, the first sound. <clears throat> this is the beginning of your first phase. And then the beginning of the fourth phase, which is at T. Or padding beginning of 70, which is the beginning or the disappearance of your um, sound, Korotkov sound. So what happens if you have a poor technique? So if... You look at this diagram again, take note that the decrease in the intensity of the top and the more and more when you have venous congestion, more and more may be absent in certain situations. If, for example, you, <clears throat> you perform the technique inappropriately. So there are some procedures or three procedures that can be used <clears throat> to augment the intensity of the Korotkov sound. So you can rapidly inflate the BP cuff or raise the arm and forearm. This is to diminish the amount of blood is trapped in the forearm. Kasi as I, um, if natratrap ito ni mo, um, what's this? The blood kasi naka-inflate naman yan, you will have uh, either a, a, a wrong BP measurement. So to, to correct this, you need to rapidly inflate the BP apparatus or raise the arm and forearm to diminish the amount of that is trapped in the forearm. <clears throat> or you can ask your patient to open and close and close the fist eight to ten times after the cuff is in, inflated above the systolic level. This is also <clears throat> important to promote vasodilatation in the area distal to the cuff. So what happens if you have an auscultatory gap or a silent zone? Sometimes you will hear the first sound, Korotkov sound. Tapos, there is a long gap. Tapos, next sound na. So, you will be confused what, 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 or which one of the two you will take as the systolic blood pressure. Kasi, there is a long gap from the first sound that you hear to the next sound that you hear. Or sometimes you miss the first sound and you get the second. Kasi mahaba yung gap. There is a so-called auscultatory gap or a silent, a silent zone. So this is an example. So you will have a false reading if <clears throat> you have an auscultatory gap. So parang ganito. Uh, this is the onset of the first sound, 180. Tapos nagkaroon ng gap. Di pa ma and the next sound is a 140. So sometimes you will miss this, especially if hindi rin tama yung pag-inflate mo. And then you just get this one, the 140. So you miss this, this part because of the presence of auscultatory gap. So to correct that, if you have an auscultatory gap, 
um, your auscultatory gap will disappear if you perform the maneuvers which have been mentioned earlier by rapidly inflating the calf or raising the arm and forearm or by asking the patient to close and open his or her fist eight to ten times. So that's one uh, technique to so that your auscultatory gap will disappear. So once uh, you do that um, maneuver, all phases of the crot cough will be present now or will be appreciated. So sometimes there are also mga patients who have a wide pulse pressure that you can even hear the sound up to zero, pa, the crot cough sound up to zero. So what happens if you have this type of BP? No disappearance of your fifth phase. So parang ganito. So if you have absent fifth phase and you hear sound up to zero, so the diastolic pressure in this case would be at the beginning of the fourth phase. And that is your 50 millimeters, beginning of fourth phase. So there are some patients who will uh, have, for example, at the ICU or at the coronary care unit who have mild hypotension like they have a BP of 100 over 74 or 66, but there is a good top. So <clears throat> the more and more here means that the patient's cardiac output is probably normal, even if their blood pressure is low, because you can still hear a more sound, a good of the carot cough, then their cardiac output here. Uh, is still normal. So, di pa yan magsha However, if, for example, you have a BP with similar blood, uh, a patient with similar blood pressure, just like the previous, you know, 100 over 70, but the top is faint, you cannot even appreciate the murmuring sound. Um, this patient actually has low carb output and it's most likely to have or to develop shock. So it's, they are already in impending shock. So next um, is the evaluation of your jugular veins. So if we use the five finger approach in cardiovascular physical examination by Harvey, the first finger is for the general appearance, then next is your jugular venous pressure or jugular venous pulse. So, so that you can appreciate more fully your jugular vein, you put a light or apply a light tangentially to evaluate your jugular vein, just like what is shown in the picture. And you will see the pulse waveforms. Or you can put the pressure over the vein just above the clavicle. Ito. Diba? So the physician here put a pressure over the vein and you now can see diba, there is gorgement of the vein. So it's above the clavicle. You, you put a pressure in the vein above the clavicle. <clears throat> so this will now facilitate the identification of your jugular vein by doing that uh, maneuver. So how do you measure? So mesh, you can measure your venous pressure, your you can estimate it by observing the upper level, the internal jugular pulsations above the sternal angle. So you can 
put just like this one, you put a ruler or a caliper and then look at the pulsation. So you, you place your patient or you position your patient at a 30 degrees or 45 degrees angle. Huh? So at 45 degrees, ito, the picture it is it's at 45 degrees angle. And then you look at the pulsation. So the highest pulsation. So from the highest pulsation, you take you get the level. So ang, uh, you put the, the ruler at the sternal angle. And then measure the highest pulsation. So normally, 4.5 cm siya. Now, above that, would indicate uh, elevated arterial or venous pressure, I mean. So the normal venous or normal mean jugular venous pressure determined as the vertical distance above the midpoint of the right atrium is 6 to 8 cm water. So this is a close-up view demonstrating a distended external jugular vein at 45 degrees angle. So, ito yun, external jugular vein. So, next is you evaluate the different waveforms created by your jugular venous pulse, excuse me. So, you feel first for the carotid pulse on the left side, while you are evaluating the jugular venous pulse waveforms and then correlate the upstroke of your carotid artery pressure. So this is a jugular, the, the bottom is your jugular venous pulse. This is a phonogram and the ECG. So the normal jugular venous pulse contains positive waves, your A, C, and B. I guess you have discussed this in your physiology, you know? So you have your A, C, and V. So these are all positive waves. So these positive deflections occur respectively before the carotid upstroke and just after the P wave of your ECG. Simultaneous with the upstroke of the carotid pulse, and during ventricular systole until your tricuspid valve opens. So you have your V wave. So your A wave is a positive deflection just after your P wave. So A wave ito here. Huh? While your C wave, it is simultaneous with your carotid wave. Tapos your V wave occurs during ventricular systole. So the A wave is generated by atrial contraction, which actively fills the right ventricle during end diastole. The C wave is caused either by transmission of the parotid arterial impulse through the external and inter internal jugular veins, or by the bulging of the tricuspid valve into the right atrium in early systole. The V wave reflects the passive increase in pressure and volume of the right atrium as it fills in late systole and early diastole. So normally, the crests of your A and V waves are approximately equal in amplitude. So the descents or troughs of, of the jugular venous pulse occur between the A and the C wave, which is your X descent, and between your C and V wave, which is your Y, y descent. Uh, between your C and V is your X descent, and, your, and between V and A is your Y descent. So the X and your X prime descents reflect the movement of the lower portion of the right atrium toward the right ventricle during final phases of your ventricular systole. The Y descent represents the abrupt 
termination of the downstroke of the V wave during early diastole after the tricuspid valve opens and the right ventricle begins to fail passively. So normally your Y descent is neither as brisk nor as deep as your X descent. So this is your A wave, your C wave. So mga kwaniya upstroke. Tapos your descent. So these are your X descent, X prime descent, tapos your Y descent. Between C and V, Y descent. Okay. So these are some of the characteristics um, jugular pulse waves for this one is atrial fibrillation. This is for tricuspid and tricuspid insufficiency and tricuspid stenosis. So in Atrial fibrillation, there is absence of your AU because you don't have an effective atrial contraction. So in atrial flutter, um, it is replaced by a rapid smaller oscillation, which is approximately 300 times per minute. So for a atrial fibrillation, there is no a wave, huh? remember that, no A wave. So this is normal. And this is atrial fibrillation. There's no A wave. In AV block, so what happens if you are you have atrioventricular block? You will see a large canon A waves. So the large canon A waves, which occurs when the atrium contracts against a closed tricuspid valve during ventricular systole. So natural, diba? If, if your atrium contracts against a closed um, tricuspid valve, this is uh, your, the pressure is reflected back to the, ano yung nakakonect sa ano mo, sa right atrium. Your superior vena cava, diba? So going up, kaya you will see a large, the pressure is reflected back, so you will uh, see a large canon A wave. So canon A wave in complete heart block or complete atrioventricular block. So this is your canon A wave. Canon A wave, kasi mataas da, malaki. Uh, ito pala. Uh, ito. Okay. So in tricuspid stenosis, you will see also large, large A wave and a slow Y descent. So the A wave here is large. You have a Y descent that is slow. Because um, you have obstruction of your tricuspid valve because it is stenotic. So you will see also a large A wave. Parang sa complete heart block because um, the atrium is contracting against a closed valve. Kaya lang, if you will see closely ano, the... The diagram, I have this one. Balik tayo. Not all the time na meron kang canon A wave. Kasi di ba ito may canon A wave. Oh, canon A wave. May A wave. Tapos ito may canon A wave. Because there are times that some of the, you know, some of the uh, impulse are conducted. Kaya na open naman yung valve. So, ito, the valve opens. So, may times na hindi canon waves yung nakikita. 
Pero in this case, because you have an obstruction, fixed an obstruction. So you will see large A waves. All the time you will see the large A waves and your slow Y descent. So if you have tricuspid insufficiency or tricuspid regurgitation, so the pulse here is almost entirely composed of a large regurgitant C and V waves. C and V waves. So V waves. C, C waves. It, yung C waves naman in tricuspid stenosis is uh, small. Dito, you have a big V wave. So there are three important information that we can obtain by examining the AVP. Your mean venous pressure, the abnormalities in REM, and valvular deformities. And um, uh, presence of clinical conditions as as restrictive pericarditis and cardiac tamponade. So for the arterial pressure, so this is the third finger. You uh, take a look at the carotid pulse. So this is your carotid pulse. So landmark for palpating your carotid pulse could be uh, below the, the angle of the mandible or uh, 2 cm lateral to your Adam's apple. Ganyan, oh. Diba ito yung Adam's apple, mga two finger. Or dito naman. So below the angle of the mandible. So for arterial pulse, <clears throat> bilateral pulse palpation should be uh, performed on all cardiac patients. Pero hindi simultaneous ha. Baka sabayin mo yung pagpalpate ng carotid pulse. One at a time. But you need to palpate both, both sides ha. One at a time when you are palpating. So you need to take note of the frequency or regularity of the pulse, the slope of the pulse wave, and character of the arterial wall. So this is your carotid artery pulse. So may dicrotic notch ka here. Okay. So the carotid pulse is a pressure uh, pressure signal acquired over the carotid artery as it passes near the surface of the body at the neck. So it delivers a pulse signal signifying the variations in arterial blood pressure and volume with each heartbeat. So your carotid pulse is a beneficial assistant to the uh, practitioner, and this will help in the recognition of your second heart sound and its components. So your carotid pulse increases sharply with the ejection of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta, and it will reach a peak, which we called as your percussion wave. So this is followed by a plateau or a secondary wave known as your tidal wave resulting from a reflected pulse returning from the upper body. So the closure of the aortic valve results in a notch known as your dicrotic notch. So the dicrotic notch, kanina yung inano ko na, na notch, that's your dicro dicrotic notch. And uh, this may be followed by the dicrotic wave because of the reflected pulse from the <clears throat> lower body. 
So the carotid pulse trace is affected by valvular imperfections, such as when you have mitral deficiency or if you have aortic stenosis. But <clears throat> it is not commonly employed in, in clinical diagnosis. So ito yung dichrotic notch. Ito pala. So if you have severe aortic stenosis, <coughs> the carotid artery pulse has delayed systolic peak and anacrotic notch on the upstroke. So the phonogram shows here, so this is your phonogram, shows the systolic ejection murmur. So this is the murmur, diamond shape. <coughs> And uh, the reverse splitting of the second heart sound. So you have your re reverse splitting. So, so supposedly the path A before P. But in aortic stenosis, you have reverse splitting because it is stenotic. So nauna yung P before the A2. So P2 before A2. So this is... Um, a characteristic uh, pulse wave form in aortic insufficiency. So you have a double systolic impulse. So you have a double systolic impulse or pulsus by bispherians, which is observed in severe aortic stenosis. This may also be observed when you have a combined aortic stenosis and aortic insufficiency. So the jugular venous pulsations may be differentiated from the pulsations of your common carotid artery by um, taking into the following criteria. So take note or pay attention to this uh, following criteria. So the multiphasic quality of the pulse, the effects of changing posture, your respiratory uh, effects, the venous compression, and the hepatojugular reflux or abdominojugular reflux. So these are the characteristics of your JVP and your carotid pulse. So JVP usually has a double wave form, while carotid single lang siya. Um, your JVP varies with position, but um, in the carotid has no variations with change in position. So um, respiration will create descents in J of your JBP with inspiration, but not with your carotid pulse. So what about effect of your pulsation? So the impulse is non-palpable in JBP and pressure occludes the pulse and veins refills from the above. Kaya, if you put a pressure, kanina yung sample, uh, just above the clavicle, you have this tension of the vein above. While for carotid, the impulse is usually palpable and it is non-compressible. And uh, for the abdominal re uh, pressure or hepatojugular reflux, you have an elevation of your JBP <laughs> when you do your this maneuver. And then for carotid, there's no change. So this is your carotid artery. Simplify lang to. So diba, at the, you can uh, appreciate your carotid artery below the angle of the mandible or 2 cm lateral to your uh, Adam's apple. So you auscultate the carotid using the bell, the stethoscope. So normally, the flow of blood in the in your blood vessels are laminar. So you have laminar flow, so that you will not hear a brewy. So, but however, if you have slight stenosis, you will hear a systolic brewy. Why systolic brewy? Because during systole, you have ejection of blood into the circulation. 
Now, if you have an obstruction, even a slight obstruction, this will create turbulence of blood across that stenotic area. So you will hear a brewy. Now, if you have severe stenosis without collateral, so what you will hear, because severe stenosis is both a systolic and a diastolic brewy. Bakit, why will you hear a diastolic brewy? So systole and diastole, you will hear the brewy. Kasi, di ba, it's obstructed na. So you have severe stenosis. So even if the blood vessel is in the relaxed state, because you have, uh, what's this? You have a, an obstruction there. You create a gradient. Tumataas yung pressure on the side proximal to the, ano, to the, to the bara, to the obstruction. So, you also create a brewy. Now, pag complete obstruction, di mo na ma, 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 you will not hear the brewy anymore. So, it will disappear. If you have dilated artery, the brewy is more of systolic. Systolic siya dilated and you create here an edgy current so you hear a systolic brewy so when examining the peripheral pulses also note the following so you take note of the color of the skin you also take note of the temperature and appearance of the skin or evidence of ischemia and then the amplitude of the peripheral Pulse should be uh, is usually influenced by the cardiac rhythm, the cardiac output, the environmental temperature, and local ischemic process. So cardiac rhythm, di ba pag alimbawa you have mga EACs, skip bits, so it affects also the amplitude of the peripheral pulse. Like for example, you have atrial fibrillation, your peripheral pulse is sometimes I know. Uh, Oh, what's this? Not full. Faint lung. And of course, uh, if you have a low cardiac output, the amplitude of your peripheral pulse would be, you know, would be affected. Sometimes you cannot even appreciate the blood pressure mm -hmm. if you have low cardiac output. So en environmental temperature, di, di ba pag cold, if you expose yourself to cold, you have vasoconstriction, local ischemic process. So these are some of the, the, the factors that may influence your peripheral pulse. So when examining for the pulses, you palpate all the ano, kuan, ha? all the pulses, the radial, the ulnar pulse. So that's how you palpate. You also palpate for the abdominal artery or, or abdominal aorta your inguinal or femoral artery. So that's for femoral, so the inguinal area. And then you also palpate for the popliteal artery. And your dorsalis pedis. You also palpate for the posterior tibial. I guess that's my last slide. Thank you for listening. Tamala. Okay. Nag attendance na kamo? Yes, Pudo. Okay. For my group, ha? Huh? We'll send the link to your group uh, leader. And then you just stand by at the waiting room. I will call at random two students at a time, huh? Yes, okay. Puto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Puto. Welcome. Thank you, Doc.